So where do we see most golf swings go off the rails? Is it down by impact? Not usually, it usually happens way before. Okay, so it's, it's a transition? Could, but even before that. Okay, so even you're talking now down around address. Yeah, so, you know, this isn't a grip and, and setup video. That's where everyone needs to start, right. and that's where a lot get off track. But, you know, I saw David Ledbetter put this in a magazine 30 years ago. Most swings are derailed in the first two feet of the backswing. And yeah. he was dead on. The more we teach, that's what we see. We see most swings, right, come off the rails, get behind the eight ball, however you want to say it, before the shaft reaches parallel with driver or iron. It doesn't matter. And if it gets off track there, you're compensating the rest of the way. Yep. So you've got two options. You can use your quarter of a second downswing to try to fix all the poor things you did or you can get that long three quarter of a second backswing in really good shape so that downswing becomes very athletic. And that's what today's video is all about is teaching you how to make the perfect takeaway. Sean, let's talk about the things that we see that really do golfers in before the club even gets moving hardly at all. Yeah, and again, you know, we harp on this because it's so important. This isn't a setup and grip video, but go watch those videos first yes, and get that do. sorted. Yes. And then we'll talk about this takeaway. So um, the issues that we see every day in lessons, you know, the really common ones are a club that's rolled, a rolled inside takeaway. Right. Club gets open, club gets really low and inside. From there, you've got no option except to come slam this over the top and it would take Mike's head off with that one. I, I would say that would by far be one of the most common ones five years to 10 years ago. Yeah. We, the golfers have gotten, you know, everybody's online now and all that. Now we see the opposite. We see, still see the club go in too far inside early. Yeah. Now we see a massively shut face. Yeah, so you might start seeing this yes. stuff like this or even the hands getting real deep. Yep, yep. Um, and the club outside here, which uh, causes some problems because this one will flop laid off. And again, normally, swing it back either one top. of those are almost always going to result in a late lift to get the club up because yeah. it just went too too deep too early yeah so you've got you know you've got depth and you've yep. got height if you use all the depth up early you got to come up and over to hit the ball and that's not a great way to try to get this club up and down the plane no we like you want to provide the depth to your swing where those hands go from down the line the depth of the swing with your body turn yeah and the arms provide the width and the up, right? Mm -hmm. We see so many golfers who will one piece take away or whatever their idea is of mm -hmm. that. We'll get in here, big body turn, all this depth. Now my shoulder turn's pretty much done. Now I just got to lift it, then I'm in trouble. Yeah, that idea of the one piece takeaway, just twisting and keeping right. the arms, like <laughs> to think there's no arm lift in the swing is a major myth because if I didn't do any lift and just turn, that's no way to play golf, right? So there's some up and down with the arms as I blend together with the turn, and that puts me dead on plane and gives me a good takeaway. Hear it all the time. Arms provide. The turn gets the arms up. Watch this. Yeah, it's, it's just not true. That's about 130 degrees of turn. That does nothing to my arms. No, it, it doesn't. If I just bend my right arm enough or is maxed out, it still wouldn't be enough. Yeah. Right. So there's elevation with both arms and there's bending with the right arm. That has to happen independently of the turn. Yeah, and then just on top of that, there's some guys that get really out here because sure. they're worried about the inside takeaway. So they pop the arm way out, right. still rolls the club open, but then they're in no spot to try to get this thing to move correctly into the back swing. Right, and we see the out and then the club way out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? You'd have to kind of loop it back around. All those things are doable. To me, just a lot of work. Right. So let's show you on gears what really good takeaways look like. You'll see some commonalities with it. And let's come back and show you a way that you can train it. Make sure you're in that, that go zone for what we're really good players do as far as taking the club away. As we just discussed, many of the issues that arise in the golf swing are a result of a poor takeaway or the first couple feet of the swing. Using gears technology, we'll now take a look at three of the most neutral and solid swings in professional golf with tens of millions of dollars in earnings between them. This will give you an idea how they manage this critical takeaway area of the swing. For this first player, we can see how he combines a few movements in harmony to achieve a very neutral takeaway position where the lead arm is under the shoulder and the club face is in line with the hands. 
These movements are a slight rotation of the lead arm, a slight bend in the trail arm, a slight shift of the pelvis to the right, and some rotation and tilt of the body as the knees start to change flex. These movements are happening in harmony. The one major thing you don't see with these great players is them taking the arms really deep across the chest at this point. When we see that move, the club and arms get very inside, and the next move is an independent arm lift to the top of the swing, which is what we are trying to avoid. For the second player here, we see basically the same pattern. The face is not rolled open or held excessively shut. The arms have spaced away from the body, indicating they are not pulling the arms behind them as if they were starting a lawnmower with their trail arm. They have also used a slight hip bump away from the target combined with an angled turn to help track the clubs up in front of the hands. This is in direct contrast to many amateurs who are trying to stay overly connected with the arms to the body in the takeaway and making a flat turn with no tilt. One more thing we need to notice with these great players is that from the face on view, the spine is staying relatively vertical. This helps the body stay in a great position to rotate to the top and arrive in a very neutral position in transition and into the downswing. For the third player here, again, we see much of the same. Once the club reaches parallel to the ground, the golf club is basically in line with the hands and the hands are under the lead shoulder. You see a slight angled turn to the body and a club face that's not wildly open or closed. The advantage to this is that the player can complete the backswing with a rotation of the body without having the need to reorient the arms, wrist, and club excessively. Also, by allowing some rotation in the lead forearm and a slight trail elbow bend in the takeaway, the golfer can remove much of the inertia of the club in transition that can cause the club to bounce around wildly at the top of the swing. In contrast, if the golfer used very locked rigid arms in the takeaway, not only will the arms generally get too far inside, the arms and wrists will tend to collapse at the top of the swing, causing a poor transition. The other advantage of making a solid neutral takeaway like you see in these golfers is that they can change direction and hit a shot from any point in the backswing. With the club basically on plane at this point in the swing, they can turn the body to the top and help ensure not only a solid top of backswing, but a solid half and three quarter swing as well, which we know are essential to good golf. The last thing to remember is that we want to achieve these positions through motion. At no time should we be trying to place the club in a spot. That's why our motion drills work so well for training the swing. Motion creates the positions, not vice versa. If you want to check to see if you're making a tour takeaway, you can film your swing, but you need to use a very specific camera angle. Put the camera at hand height from down the line. Make sure the camera lens is pointed through the hands to the target. This will give you the optimal view to see what your club is actually doing. Then if needed, you can go to work on figuring out how to get it in a better spot. Your game will thank you for it, but your playing partners won't. All right, Sean, let's have you again look down range and we're gonna dial in this uh, takeaway. Okay. So what most golfers do, and we'll say if you're a right-handed golfer, you're typically gonna play on the right-hand side of the ball. It's this right hand most often that really kind of takes over, makes things get off track. Yeah, a lot of times they, they have this like lawnmower move right. where they pull this arm back behind them really early. Uh, if not that, it's the guy that pops it out like we talked about earlier. Or it's just keeping this wrist too flat or flailing it open. Like yeah. the right hand's dominant for a reason. Yeah, and, and the hard part is how do you fix it? it you know, I think um, everybody's just trying to place it there. Right. And that's not the golf swing. It's, it's a swinging motion. So just to try to place it there, you could do that a few times, but when you get the club in your hands, you're right back to where you started again. It's a great point. We'll have guys send us videos. They're, they're, they're doing it on like a live view pro, right? They're nailing it, nailing it. And then as soon as they make a swing, it's way inside because you said you've placed it in this spot without the dynamic movement. You add that to it and it either goes way in or does something else goofy. So we want to train this dynamic movement takeaway. Yeah, so Mike and I love drills where the club is swinging. Yes. You swing it into a spot. So for us, the best way to do this is set up normally, right? Mm -hmm. Swing the club forward here, right? And then swing it back through this, almost like you were hitting the ball backwards. Yep. Right? So if I did this and kind of hit this ball backwards and just let it swing, it would end up in a pretty good spot. Yeah. I would say that would be the graduated version. I won't even take it one step more remedial than that and more basic than that is I want you to do it left arm only. Okay. And catch it with the right hand. So I'm gonna put my set up to the ball, put my right hand hang down, yep. swing it back and catch right it. Right there. 
Swing it back and catch it. So what I want you guys to feel, as Sean does that, swing it back to about right here, is I want you to feel where this right arm is when it's right there in that good spot. Yeah, and don't manipulate it. I mean, you would really have to do something yes. uh, to manipulate this club to get it off its swinging track, right? If I just held it with two fingers, and remember, it's a golf swing, right? right? If I just held it with two fingers and let it swing, I can make a pretty nice takeaway and backswing just by stopping that with my right hand where it sits. We, we do this thousands, thousands of times, and we've never seen a golfer do. Yeah. Right? Or never the seen of the club. this. Right? They swing the club because you're weak with this one arm. Swing the club, and you just put your right hand right there on it. It's teaching you what you go. need to know, and that's what the drills are good for. They can be the, the teacher for you yep. instead of just placing it. So th the graduation of that would be swing it back, catch it, stop it, and just finish with the turn and then hit. Right. Right? Exactly so let me right. chip one out there and see if I can make contact. Right. So here, swing it back, catch it, finish it, and chip it out there. Good. Okay? All right, so give that a try. First, left arm only. Get it started out here because, we, again, we want some momentum. Catch it. Look at it in the mirror. Okay, that's pretty good. And then catch it, turn, hit it. And then once you graduate from that, both hands on it. Do the same thing. Make sure you're still good because we're creating this dynamic movement to make sure this club moves. And then... What a great way to get some rhythm in your swing too, What right? did David say? All golf coaches would be out of business if golfers started their swings here. He did. He said it to us last year in his video series. Yeah. He's saying if you started here, swung it back, it would not only get your backswing in a good spot, it would provide this rhythm that all good players have, right? You know what you're going to do? You're going to hit it farther too. Rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. Hit it farther because you'll have a faster takeaway, which helps you build that speed on the downswing. You found this video helpful and you need more help with your consistency. We want to help you with that. Go to the first comment below this video. You'll see a link. It's our first pinned comment. There'll be a link in there. Click on that link. It'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.